Okay, so Geekworm have sent me some more cool products. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna concentrate on the Orange Pi 5 Plus accessories that they've sent me, but they also sent me some Compute Module 4 things which are very interesting, and also something which you won't be expecting in a video. Really, really cool, really happy to have it, uh, but that, again, will be in a separate video. So for this video, I'm using my Orange Pi 5B in a Geekworm case. I've already got a separate review on that. This video is more about the Orange Pi 5 Plus case. Can't believe how quick they've managed to get this out. Uh, and also I've got a couple of heat sinks. So if you just want some silent cooling, uh, these are two different size heat sinks for the Orange Pi 5 Plus. But before I do that, I thought I'd show how to set up a dual monitor desktop with a different background on each desktop. Because in Ubuntu, you can't do it by default. Most operating systems, or a lot of operating systems I've tried, allow you to independently switch them very simply. With Ubuntu, it looks like you have to install a separate piece of software. I'm doing this with a USB-C to HDMI adapter. That's how I'm getting dual monitor because there's not dual monitor outputs or dual HDMIs on an Orange Pi 5B. There is on the Plus model, which isn't in there yet. Uh, so let's have a look at this monitor. So standard Ubuntu, if you right click on the desktop, you can change the background. But what happens is you pick a background and it just changes on both monitors at the same time and just saves it as that. But with Hydra Paper, if I press Control Alt T to install it, you just do sudo apt install Hydra Paper. And to launch it, just press the Windows key and start typing Hydra Paper and it will come up. Uh, you can see here we've got the two different monitors nice and clearly labeled. Uh, I've already told it which folder and I've told it to look for the pictures folder. And if I just drag this down, you'll see that in my pictures folder, I've got these two images. And if you just do a search uh, for dual monitor backgrounds and click on, I think the first one. Yeah, so this is the one I used uh, and you can download it as two separate components. So say for instance, I wanted uh, this mountain background, which I think looks pretty cool. I can scroll down and you can see I've got the left and the right image. So if I click on the right image and then save image as and just save it in that location. And then on the left image, right click, save image as and save. So now if I go back to Hydra Paper, Let's just minimize this. I can pick my monitor, which is on the right hand side. I know that because it's got my capture device in it. Uh, and I can choose what to put in it. So we go to pictures. I don't know why they're not showing up. Let's, let's close and launch Hydra Paper again. Yeah, so there they are. Uh, so on the right hand side, it's going to need to be this one. And on the left hand side, it's going to need to be this one. And then you can hit tick and then you get the option of just doing the desktop or the lock screen. So if I put it on both, you can see that it shows up, but also when the screen is locked, it also shows both images, uh, but in a sort of blurred state. Okay, so let's talk about these heat sinks first of all. Uh, very basic. Uh, so if I open this one up, this is the 16mm one. Uh, you can see loads of fins on it and these little push pins. Uh, to put it in place. Also has a little thermal pad, but you could also use thermal paste. And this one is the 23 mil one. So this one will be more effective, but obviously makes it a bit bigger. There you go. So nice and thick. So uh, similar to what you get on the Mechatronics boards and they work really well on the Mechatronics boards. They're always passively cooled. So no sound at all, which I really like. So here you can see how I've been using my Orange Pi 5 Plus since I've had it. This is a five volt fan, but I've got it on the three volt pin on the right hand side. I can move it over to the left hand side to have five volt, but then it makes a little bit of noise and I would rather, I mean, it makes some noise on three volt, but it's very quiet. Uh, and you can see I've got it at a bit of a funny angle. I've got nuts and bolts holding it in place. I've still got my little NVMe drive loose, but it seems to work absolutely fine like that. So let's take this off. Should be enough to get the fan off. And then you can see a bit closer how I did have it. So I just had a couple of nuts, got it right that time, nuts and bolts uh, on here. So if I 
do that. I could probably use my finger to get it off yet. Yeah. Let's try the thinner one first. Pop the thermal pad on. So you can see there's a couple of holes here and here and we're literally just popping that straight on and then pushing these through. That's two. Very nice. So I need to boot this up really, don't I? And have a look and see uh, how that works and then maybe try it with the bigger one. Let it cool down and try it with the bigger one. So on the Geekworm site, uh, if we scroll down, you can see all the, well, I've got all three of these cases now. And uh, this is the heatsink. This is the Orange Pi 5 uh, page that I'm on now. So if I click on that, uh, you can see that they've got actually a 10 mil one and then a 16 mil one and then a 23 mil one. So obviously if you can fit this one in, it's gonna be more effective cooling. Let we go back to the main page. What else have they got? Various antennas. Yeah, and they do uh, older pies as well. Like there's a Pi 4B, a Pi 3 case. Right, so let's shut this down because I need to boot up on the Orange Pi 5 Plus now. Okay, so currently we're running at about 52, 53 degrees. I've done a few things on this operating system. Uh, the maximum it's been is 55. Let's do a stress test. So let's do this for 100 seconds and see how high the temperature goes up. So we can see it's climbing already, 63 degrees, 64 degrees. I mean, there's always a chance that with both that it will max out over 100 seconds. Well, it hasn't gone over 66, 67. Okay, so that's finished. And what was the highest temperature we got was 75 degrees. So I'm going to shut this down, let it cool down a bit, put the bigger cooler on it, and then give that a try. So for the larger heatsink, I'm going to use a bit of thermal paste because it's supposed to be more effective. And obviously the large heatsink is going to be better anyway. And let's pop that on. Got to make sure it doesn't get stuck on the three and a half mil bit there. So it's nice and flat. Okay, so I've been browsing the web and uh, I've just installed Handbrake and put a file on there just to try and get the temperature up uh, because it's much cooler at the moment. So let's launch Handbrake and open a video file that I've got. This GoPro one, and we'll convert it to HQ1080. And let's hit start, and we'll watch that temperature ramp up. Just want to try and get it around about the 52, 53 uh, that it was on the other. There you go, so it's already up to that sort of temperature. Handbrake does really go for it. Uh, so cancel current and stop. And oh, it cools down so quick, that's the trouble. Let's just run the stress test for 100 seconds and see what happens. So we've got 59, 60. So we're looking to try and beat 75. That's what it got to with the smaller cooler. Okay, so that's all finished and the hottest temperature we got to 69 degrees, which is to be expected. So you're only really gonna pick the smaller one if space is a concern, if you're building it into a case or something. But really, if you can fit it, then you're better off with the bigger one, the 23 mil one. Okay, so I've taken the large cooler off now. Uh, let me know what you think about the deployment of thermal paste. Too much, too little. Someone's always got an opinion on it. Now this is an early model and there may be a slight adjustment with the holes on the bottom, it says in the email. And the next version will have uh, antenna outputs on it as well. So let's take these four screws out. So now this can come off. Oh, there's another heat sink in here as well. So a, neat, a lower one. So there's the 10 mil one. Decent sized five volt fan. So we need to attach four of these standoffs. They're all in. Let's pop that inside and see how well it lines up. Oh, that feels all right. Yeah, everything lines up there. Four of these little black screws go in. So that's those in. Let's see how much space we have. So with the large heat sink, I can pop the fan on and I can see that it's already touching the level that's at the top. And because the way you do it, you would basically pop it in and slide it across, that's gonna scrape across the top of the heat sink. So I could use this heat sink 
because that definitely has plenty of room and it's going to be more effective than this heat sink. This being the original one or the intended one. But I think what I'm going to do is use this heat sink and not use a fan. Uh, but I'm going to put the fan in the lid anyway um, just to see what sort of noise it makes. It's a 5 volt fan but it's a bit larger than the one I was using before. So basically four screws fits in and if I have a look on the pinout diagram this is actually for Raspberry Pi 4 but it's going to be so these two are 5 volt and this is ground so I'm going to plug it onto these two like that. But if I wanted to, I could split those up and I could use it in three volt configuration, which I probably would end up doing. Uh, so let's pop this in and let's just power it up without a monitor or anything like that, just to see how much noise the fan makes. Yeah, that's pretty reasonable, certainly not very loud, but I do prefer a three volt fan. So I would probably put little extensions on those cables to put it into three volt instead, especially as we have uh, a heat sink as well. But I'm going to use it without a fan. So let's switch this off. Unplug this. More thermal paste. And back with the big one. Okay, that's firmly in place. Let's try the lid with the fan just to see what happens. Yeah, no, it doesn't, it doesn't fit down. Um, but that's not the one that's supplied with it. This is only me because I've got all the bits I can adapt it. It would definitely fit with this medium cooler. And pop that in. Back on with the four screws. And they appear to have thought of everything. So we've got a little window here for the light. We've got the micro switches, which are accessible here. USB-C, SD card, three and a half mil jack, couple of USB threes. And then on the back, we've got a couple of USB twos, all three HDMIs are nice and flush as well. So you're not gonna get any sort of where you're plugging it in. It doesn't go all the way in the two ethernets. And these two ports, which are display cable outlet and also touch interface outlet. So let's plug it in and give it a try. Yeah, you can clearly see the LEDs flashing and that's booted up. I keep forgetting to mention it's Amazon Prime Day on July the 11th and 12th. If you sign up with one of my links, there's basically a 30 day free trial, which there always is on Amazon, but it's definitely worth doing before Prime Day because that's the only way you can get the exclusive offers. And there's always really good offers on all sorts of things. And if you click on one of my links and you end up buying something else, it still benefits the channel. Thanks very much to Geekworm for sending me these cases and all the other bits they've sent me, especially what's in this box. Thanks very much for watching. I hope this helps. Please like and subscribe.